to figure out why I keep missing that shot. I'll tell you, it is amazing how fast our skills will degrade, guys. It is just amazing. Man. Okay. Hey, guys, Abner Miranda here. Welcome out to the range. Today, I wanted to talk with you about, look, the very fact that you even clicked on this video tells me that you're curious. In lieu of arrest. If you're a police officer, you automatically know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not a cop, you're asking yourself, what does that mean? You probably didn't even know. Okay, I'm being mean. Some of you didn't even know how to pronounce the word Lou. It's Lou, like the name L-O-U, Lou. In lieu of arrest means instead of arrest or in place of arrest. And what am I referring to? Well, I realized when I did a video last week about um, about the position that law enforcement is in right now in America and uh, the comments that came out of that guys I read every single comment and 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 I want you to know that I learned so much from you all the reason I did every single comment is because some of y'all exasperate me because you have no brain mouth filter Ugh! So yeah, that's why I said every single comment, because I do, I read every single comment, I respond. If you didn't get a response, it's probably because you did something that was so incredibly dumb and heinous, and you mouthed off so bad that I automatically erased your comment, and I blocked you. Because freedom of speech is not just let speech. Freedom of speech is freedom of speech with internal controls. I've already done videos on this, moving on. In lieu of arrest to my brothers and sisters in law enforcement. As America is moving forward and we're having to figure out how we're gonna fight to get America back, and I, I think it is doable, law enforcement is going to have to understand that we the people, because even though I used to be a cop, I am now a private citizen, that we the people are not your subjects. We are your brothers and sisters. We are your fellow citizens. I've said this before, and those of you that are watching right now are going to be shocked by some of the things that I'm going to tell you, but they're absolute fact because I've lived them as a police officer. The question that gets asked from time to time is, are there quotas? Well, I'm going to tell you bluntly, there are quotas. Whether they are expressly written or expressly expressed, or insinuated or threatened by command staff to the new guy through his fellow their his or her fellow officers quotas exist here's the scary part quotas in some agencies and some agencies i worked also included arrests which is why the title of this video is in lieu of arrest some of you are going to be shocked when i tell you this are you aware that um, traffic citations are actually arrestable offenses. And the reason that most traffic citations are taken, I'm sorry, speeding tickets, most speeding tickets, most speeding violations, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, most speeding violations are arrestable offenses. You are often cited to court, which is why they issue a citation. You are cited to court, you are summoned to come to court in lieu of arrest, instead of arrest. And that's something that needs to be understood because while it is few and far between that a person gets themselves arrested, although some have, it is few and far between that people get themselves arrested for a speeding citation or a speeding infraction, it is an arrestable offense. What becomes a problem is when a police officer finds themselves in a position where they've got that back pressure pushing them. And man, you know, you gotta get your numbers up. You gotta get your numbers up. Look, once again, some of you watching this are, are like, are you freaking kidding me? No, I'm not freaking kidding you folks. This is the way law enforcement works. And so those of you that are cops that are watching this who are mad as hell that I'm releasing this information, grow up. America is in the ditch. And right now, you are the most powerful person in America. I can't, I, I can never, I can never, um, I can never assume that my videos are connected to one another. 
meaning that I can never assume that a person who just stumbled on this video will have already seen the previous video. So the previous videos that I've already covered this on is simply this. The most powerful people in America right now are the police officers. Why? Because if you look at where we are right now in America with all the mask mandates and all the, the mandated shutdowns and all the other stuff that's happened in America, had the police officers not followed the orders and done those things to America, America would be in a far better position right now because we would have collectively said, we the citizens and the police officers who are citizens would have said to the to the governors, to the mayors, to the to the whoever was pushing these things, we would have said, go to hell. We're not doing that, it's unconstitutional. But what happened? A bunch of cops all over America said, we're gonna follow the orders. We're gonna follow the orders. And now we are where we are. Remember, following orders got us the mess that is in the White House right now. Got us the best president in America has ever seen pitched out the door. But with all honesty, guys, that actually had to happen because America really need to needed to wake up to where we are right now. So this is actually a good thing. For where we are right now, this is actually a good thing. But the key to where we are right now is we must understand that police officers, you can no longer tow the party line. No, that's, that's not a good way to put it. Police officers, you can no longer just follow orders because in doing so, you continue to make this worse and worse and worse for America. So yes, for those of you that are not police officers who are watching this, who are saying to yourself, you mean to tell me that a police officer will actually be pressured to write tickets and have arrests? Yes, I was pressured that way. And a bunch of other cops just like me were pressured that way. And it's absolute fact and it's BS and it needs to stop because that right now, in February of 2021 is making this problem worse and worse and worse. There needs to be a major dynamic shift in American law enforcement and, and police officers need to go back to being community oriented police officers. Yes, COP, community oriented police officers. Guys, it means in your neighborhoods, in your business districts, talking to people. It doesn't mean hiding behind bushes, running radar, writing tickets, writing tickets, writing tickets. I know that in doing this, there are police officers watching this right now who have very little emotional brain, uh, who have very little emotional filter and have a very poor brain mouth filter. And you guys somehow feel like I'm just like letting the cat out of the bag and making your job harder. No, you're making your job harder. You need to stand up. Folks, my agency tried to force me. You need to write more tickets. My personal favorite was this one. This is a twofold problem. So actually, let me address the first problem. My agency tried to force me. You need to be writing more tickets. And I said, you know what? No, I'm, I'm fed up of going to court on a fool's errand because the judge lets everything go. And I'm, I'm fed up with playing the stupid game. And by the way, guys, my rule was if you weren't doing 20 miles over the speed limit, I didn't even bother touching you. Not five miles over the speed limit, 20 miles over the speed limit because we had ridiculously slow speed limits in my town. So I waited until you were straight getting it before I bothered to write you a ticket. That way, it was really clear in your mind that you really were going over the speed limit. And even those got thrown out. So I got sick and tired of dealing with it. Now, I want to be very clear about something. If I had gotten convictions, would I have written more tickets? No, because I frankly didn't care about writing tickets because I recognized that my job as a police officer was not running radar. My job was being seen being in the neighborhoods, talking to people, letting people know that I'm there watching over them. The other side of this is police officers are pressured by command staff. And I can, I can literally see the lieutenant that said this to me. Don't get me wrong, this is a man that I, that I really care about, okay? So don't think that I hate this guy. But he said the same line that I'm sure was said to him when he was a rookie, and it was, it's not your fault if you load the cart and the donkey goes blind. Now, I know a lot of cops all over the country right now are laughing their tails off because you've all heard it too. That is the lamest excuse that's given to you by command staff who's trying to somehow make themselves and you feel better about the fact that the judge, your town judge, your county judge, whatever, who's a cockroach, who does everything he can to constantly get reelected, 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 throws everything out. How? Look, for those that don't understand the bigger picture, if a judge goes around convicting the snot out of everybody, is he going to get reelected? No, he's going to get voted out because the general public, the cockroach side of the general public wants soft judges, 
right? So what you get is a judge who's so damn corrupt that everything that comes in front of him, he hems and he haws and he throws it out. The problem is you as the police officer gets, uh, get abused in court. And I mean, relentlessly, you will get abused in court. So here's what I ended up doing. This is, this is a funny aside. Here's what I ended up doing on those tickets that I did write because the person was speeding so bad I had to write the ticket. I basically went into the courtroom and I just, look, if they're going to ruin my Wednesday night, I'm going to have some fun. And I have proof. There are police officers who I know are still working at my old agency who can attest to this. I went full Tom Cruise on a few good men. I mean, I had a guy who was getting it in a Mercedes Benz, the, the, the Gullwing thing. And uh, he was ripping through our town. I mean, this guy was, woo, and I was like, I, I can't ignore that. I mean, it's bad. So I pull the guy over. He actually stopped. I pull the guy over and I write him a citation. And he comes to court, Mr. Fussy Bridges. And uh, he's all bent out of shape and he's there with his attorney. You know, he's standing like this and his attorney is like, oh, your honor, blah, 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 blah. And I'm standing over here. And um, I basically do, uh, your honor, on the evening of such and such, at approximately such and such a time. Actually, the way the, the, way the phrase is read is, on or about the evening of such and such, at such and such a time, I witnessed, you know, Mr. Smith um, uh, driving his Mercedes, blah, 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 at a rate of, I think he was doing like 70 something in a 35. Or, no, se yeah, 70, se 75 and a 35, something, I forget. And the, the attorney started playing the lying game. And I basically, smacked my fist and I said your honor that's a lie and I basically was channeling Tom Cruise going you can't handle the truth and I had so much fun I actually picked up the lectern and I smacked it on the ground and the judge at one point laughed did this and goes all right officer Miranda that's enough and I looked across the hall and my lieutenant goes what the hell are you doing and I was like and later on I told him, I said, I'm sick and tired of being dragged into this courtroom on these stupid tickets, being run into a circle, being laced up into a pretzel by the judge. They ruined my evening and they let every one of these cockroaches go. So from now on, I'm going to start having fun. And guess what? The ticket mandate thing kind of went out the window in, re in relation to me because I kind of made myself a stink in the courtroom. So the point of this is this. For those of you police officers who think that you're somehow under the thumb, and those of you that don't understand this, police officers understand this, this is the life of a police officer. I'm going to do a video specifically on this. This is how you have to exist as a police officer. You're always underneath somebody's thumb, the general public, your, your lieutenant, your captain, your sergeant who's got it out for you. There's always someone doing this to you in law enforcement, which is why so many police officers become jaded. And of course, now that in their mind, America has turned their back on them. Guys, we haven't turned our backs on you. The left has made you think we've turned our backs on you. We need you. Okay, I'm not going to be one of those people who says, Oh, I love my police officers. I'm going to back the blue. Sh shut up. That, that's stupidity. I, I back my police officers. Really? by buying that sticker made in China? Is that your extent of backing police officers? Really? Look, I'm saying to you that there are millions of people like me who are waking up and realizing that you guys and gals are there to help us. And we are trying to back you, but we're asking you to start growing some compassion for the general public and stop making our jobs, um, our, our livelihoods that much harder. So exercise in lieu of arrest because as we start moving forward in America and they start passing down more edicts from the White House and more presidential executive orders and more crap starts getting ramrodded down your throat and forcing you to ram it down our throat you need to stand up and you need to say nope I'm not gonna do that because that is illegal that's unconstitutional and I'm not gonna do that to my fellow citizens and we will back you and like I say in all these videos you're wearing a body camera. That's a two-way street. Use it against the very people giving you an order. In the same manner that this camera is looking at me, your camera can be looking back at the person giving an order. You can record them and you can release that to not the general media because the general media will not show it. You can release it to social media and we the people will make sure that it gets to where it needs to be seen and we will back you because you will then have shown courage and respect and honor and more than anything else, you will have stood up for that oath that you swore 
That's an oath that I swore, and I will never forget that oath. Ever. Ever. Guys, that oath matters. To defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Well, right now, the enemy is both foreign and domestic. Police officers, we need you. We need you to be in our corner. God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one. Gotta figure out why I keep missing that shot.